Hi, Intrepid viewers. <clears throat> this is Dan Dubs at the House of Broken Dubs Things. Uh, our broken thing today is a 2007 Ford Focus automatic transmission four-door hatchback. It belongs to my son. And it presents itself today in a clinical process with no second gear and no fourth gear. There are no DTCs rendered. There was a DTC for a shift solenoid. Uh, that was corrected and now it has a mechanical failure that does not error out as a code. The overdrive light is flashing and uh, it's very unhappy. The reverse engagement is very good. Drive engagement's fine. The roller one-way roller clutch is functioning just fine. Third gear locks up without any big issue. So we are currently trying to diagnose this one. Uh, the commonality between second gear and fourth gear in this unit is a 2-4 intermediate band. For those that uh, aren't uh, automated transmission savvy, a band is essentially a, a friction element that grabs a drum, in other words a round object, and it clamps down to actually hold it. Basically, that's a function of the band. We can go in more into the uh, planetary gear set inside, but I don't think that's what you're here for. Um, historically, uh, going way back in my youth, I did automated transmissions as a professional career, so uh, I am not, not unfamiliar with it. And with rare things, the, nothing's really changed in all those years. It's still using hydraulic force to clamp and hold the lock using a planetary gear set, uh, either a Simpson or a Ravino gear set, to uh, apply the engine power through to the wheels. Okay, uh, not that you wanted to see me, I just wanted to point out the transmission pan and uh, look at my weapon of destruction. This is a uh, speed wrench favored by old school automatic transmission repair guys. Why a speed wrench? Well, that's no particular reason. It's quiet, uh, it's very controllable, and it does a nice job at uh, getting things done and uh, not making a ton of noise. And speed's fine. After listening to the impacts for my many years of my youth, I uh, kind of cherish the, the quiet occasionally underneath the car. Okay, I'm going to get the rest of the pan down and I'm going to bring you back. An automated transmission has one job in life. That's to make one heck of a mess on you. So, unless you're careful, you can make quite a mess. So, the trick I used here is to loosen this and always leave a bolt towards the end before it starts to drop, but you can control the descent. I actually made a pretty good controlled deployment of the fluid here, but uh, I'm going to leverage the one screw that I used because these will stick and they will get you because once again, it's its only job in life is to get you wet. And tranny fluid isn't all that disgusting, but it certainly can ruin an evening, especially when you get it in your hair, and then it runs down your arm, into your armpit, then veers off and starts heading towards your nether realms. So it's something you want to try to control the best. All right, never trust it. Ever. Okay. Nice and controlled. Okay. Draining. Nice. Now my new drain pan isn't draining. I wonder why that is. Aha. First, we must pull the plug, Daniel. So we also didn't make a gigantic mess, which is a victory in itself. So, uh, the pan's down, as I said, and when you're working on automatics, you want to kind of give the pan a good once-over. Um, 
a lot of the shims inside are made of brass. Uh, a lot of them are made out of plastic, which is fine. But you'll notice inside the pan, there are no large chunks of anything. Yeah, there's some black. Hey, you know, stuff gives up. This car is 140 some thousand miles. There is a little bit of metallic debris that could be coming directly from the uh, planetaries as those gears have worn in over the many, many years. There's a magnet down here at the bottom of the pan. Pretty standard issue for Ford. It attracts those particles. They knew they were going to come loose, so it attracts the particles and kind of holds them in suspension. And you can take one of these and give it a wipe. Kind of give it a back and forth. Yeah, it's black and it's gooey, but nothing shiny, uh, nothing brass. So this isn't horrible news, okay? But we're gonna continue on. The next thing we have to deal with is the dreaded valve body. Okay, it's not a ton of light in here right now. I apologize for that. I just didn't feel like pulling the cord out here. Uh, there's the valve body itself. These little elements right here, this is the uh, shift solenoids off and so forth there. Uh, the filter has been removed from back here. And you'll notice you can start to see the constant slow drip that's going to <laughs> it's going to follow us the whole way through this. <clears throat> so, but that's the valve body. Those retaining bolts are going to come down underneath. It's basically a lot of dead space underneath, but the gear train is up in this area right here. So, we're going to get that down, get it out of the way, and go from there. Well, sports fans, there it is, out of the vehicle. Um, I would be remiss to say, not to say actually, that uh, I was not ambushed. As careful as I was about controlling the fluid drippage and all of that, I was attacked by these two guys. These would be the shift accumulators. They dropped out because there was no securing them. Up okay, the valve body's been removed. And well, Again, there's no significant trash floating around in here, but there is a situation where I'm not real happy about the results at present. The, uh, you can see those clearly. That lower piece that's kind of sticking out where the gap there, that's the band. And right below that where you see the black kind of uh, checkered marks underneath, that is the drum. So the drum is what the band grabs, and that's great. But you can look at those black spots. Those are heat checking spots. It has been slipping for a while. Now, I'm not sure if that was a total failure, but I believe it's been doing it for quite a while. And uh, probably been slipping and uh, nobody told Dad. But uh, anyway, uh, something else to look at. Is that a complete failure? No, well, not exactly. But is that fixable? Well, maybe. I mean, sure, I can change the parts and we can be all fine and dandy, but it's a lot of work. I'm getting old. So, just to highlight, this is the band right up here. It feels like it's setting in between two spots, which is good, which would mean it's not broken, but it's certainly been slipping for a while. Now, the servo I mentioned earlier, that's the servo cover right here. That's the little hydraulic cylinder that pushes up. Let me get my finger out here. It pushes up, and then that's what causes the band to clamp right around the drum and that's what holds that member while the planetary does its thing so there you go and as i mentioned before the drip goes on 
for days countless days so on the surface level um, yeah I'm not doing this on my back no I'm too old for that so the trans we took a shot would it work probably I could get it working but should I probably not because it's going to uh... well thanks for sharing this part of the adventure the score is focus 2 Dan 0 um, the band looks really bad I'm not sure that it didn't just uh, get consumed and then uh, the distance around the drum is something the servo can't overcome so it slowly burned itself to death which is Okay, that's not horrible. It's been going on for a long time. Um, question remains, how to approach it. The uh, best way is to go ahead and yank it out, flip it over. But uh, with limited garage space, I'm kind of limited to the driveway for the moment. So uh, it's gonna be a wait and see. So uh, stay tuned for the next chapter in this saga. And thanks for watching. And uh, hit like or subscribe or what do you think you need to do. Uh, look forward to the next chapter in this one. Thank you all.